I was just someone caught in the moment of starting a business, being successful, and then it all went downhill. Hey babes, welcome back to my channel. It's your CEO girl boss, Siska Beauty, also known as Francisca Francois. In today's video, I am going to be sharing with you guys mistakes I regret making my first year of business that was an epic fail. And also mistakes you should avoid making in your business so you don't have to go through the same thing that I went through. If you're visiting my channel for the first time, I am the CEO and founder of a beauty brand called Ava Beauty. I've had my own business for a little over four years now, and I am also a full-time entrepreneur. On this channel, I am sharing my journey with you guys as I continue to build my brand alongside educational knowledge for my CEO boss babes that are looking to elevate their business. I've learned so much throughout my years of business that y'all, no one taught me that I wanted to create a platform where I teach others. Alongside on this channel, you guys are also going to get beauty, lifestyle, and best self content. So let's get into these mistakes and these epic failures I did my first year of business. Y'all, when I look back at it, I think to myself, what was you doing? Because the math ain't mathing, right? So I'm going to go ahead and share with you guys these epic mistakes that I made that I honestly want you to take an initiative if you're just starting out your business, if you already have a business and you need to do a rebrand. And if this applies, honey, we got to fix it ASAP. So let's dive into number one. Number one, not separating my business revenue with my personal money. Like y'all, I literally had everything coming into one account. And where that makes a big mistake is everything is just kind of bunched in together. So as you're getting this money deposited into your bank, you don't know what's what unless you're on top of it like effectively. Now, with that mistake that I made, I did get my ish together my second year of business and I did create a whole video about how to organize your business finances, but that's something you really, really want to not do when you're first getting started. I always recommend now that I've gone through the experience and of course, you know, been doing it for a few years now, if you know you want your business for the long run, go ahead and create a separate business account. You know, that way you have your business funneling into one bank account. It's easier to manage when it comes to taxes. You know what you need to write off. You know every single transaction. Instead of stressing yourself out like myself, where the money was coming into one account, and when it came time for taxes and write-offs, your girl was stressed. It took me so much longer to go through certain transactions and it was just so much harder to kind of separate the money that was flowing in. Number two, at some point when I first was getting started, I was accepting cash transactions for my business. Now, where that isn't a problem, I wasn't using a merchant you know, one of those merchant IDs or one of those merchant things where you divide it, you put it in the system. Like it was not going in the system. So I was accepting this cash and giving out the product. When it came to looking at my numbers, it just wasn't making sense because I, I was doing that for quite some time. And once again, this can get very, very confusing when it comes to your business. Like if you do go to like, you know, pop-up shops or you go to events where you're selling your products. And of course you have like, you know, the merchant box. I know Shopify has it and whatever website provider you normally use have them. Normally if your customers are using card, you can insert that in and it can be already, you know, entwined with your business website and with your business funnel on the back end. But like I said, I wasn't doing that. And you can also do it like that for transactions as well, where you can, Put it in the POS system. Oh, this person gave me 25 for this and it will put it in the system for you. But y'all, I wasn't doing that. Once again, my business money was very, very confusing and I was not on top of it at all, like at all. And like I said before, you just want to be just as on top of your business finances when you're first getting started, because that's a lot of the reasons why a lot of businesses fail. And I'm really happy that I got my ish together before continuing 
And I've always been one of those girls who's like, you know, super, super math savvy. But when it came to running a business, this was something that was totally new to me. No one was holding my hand to teach me, hey, girl, you need to open up four different savings account and one checking account. You need to be doing X, Y, and Z when it comes to your business money. I had to learn all this information on my own. If you're already in that step where you feel like you kind of need that extra support, check out my previous video where I teach you guys how to organize your business finances. Now let's get into the third mistake that I made that was like, a, what the F? Now, the third thing that I regret making my first year of business was having way too many launches. Within just that first year, I believe I had seven launches and four of them were collaborations and two of those collaborations were not successful. And that really hurt my pocket because, you know, money was coming in. I was getting excited. I wanted to do X, Y, and Z. But the problem was that I wasn't spreading it out. You know, I was just living in the moment of excitement saying, oh my God, let me go ahead and do another launch. Let me go ahead and do another launch. Instead of doing what I do now, where I spread out my launches throughout the year. So every year, your girl has between two to three launches and I spread them between the quarters of the year, the seasons of the year, and they are well planned out and thought out and with a budget. If you guys want me to create a video like this, please let me know in the comments and I can definitely teach you guys how I did that. But when I was first getting started, like I said, excitement got the best of me and I just kept launching, launching, launching. And when you're launching, you know, products and stuff, there's a cost to it. You gotta buy the new product that you're launching. You gotta pay for advertising and marketing. You got to, it's just a lot. It's just a lot and it wasn't cheap. And once again, that really hurt my pockets. The fourth mistake I regret making that year as well too was I was overspending on inventory. And that's where I feel like I really, really messed up. Where my first year was very, very successful for a beginning startup and being really close to my first five figures, I could have done better when it came to my inventory. I often found myself buying more inventory than I needed because I simply had the money. And well, like I said, when you're first getting started into business, you know, you get so excited seeing new successes and just new little things and your small little wins that sometimes we don't buckle up and think this is a business. So this is not just my personal, you know, little side status quo. Well, and if that's what it is to you, that's different. But for me, this was a business. And I was just spending way too much on inventory than I needed. And alongside that, I did not know my benefits as a business owner. When you're a business owner, a lot of places have business owner programs where they will sell you stuff in bulk simply because you're a business. There are sites like Costco actually has a business program. There's Staples. There's also some other resources as well too, and I can actually do a video on that too if that's something that you guys want. But they have these programs and these systems when you're a business owner to help reduce your cost. And I wasn't taking the advantage of that. I was literally buying myself from the regular regular store, paying tremendously at a price that I didn't need to be spending it at. Where I could have got majority of my supplies in bulk and I wasn't doing that. And my business suffered that year, you know, because of that. I had way too much inventory, not enough money. I was buying way too much supplies at a high cost and not enough as a business owner. Like I really did not know my value as a business owner that first year. I was just someone caught in the moment of starting a business, being successful, and then it all went downhill. The fifth mistake I regret making that first year as well too is extreme burnout and comparing myself to others. When I first launched my business back in 2018, I was literally like what, 21, 2021. I was working already two jobs. I was a full-time cosmetologist. I had clients for hair and makeup and I had a business. Now, where is the balance in that? There is no balance. The free time that I did have, I did work on my business and I was very effective on that. Like I really did work hard, but I also got caught up in social media gurus telling me I wasn't working hard enough. 
you know, the Gary V's of the world, the other people of the world, you know, those social media platforms that says, if you're not waking up at 5 a.m. in the morning, you're not putting enough work. I got lost into the fact that that information fed inside of me that I felt like I wasn't doing enough work. So I was literally working when I wasn't working my regular nine to fives and I wasn't doing hair. We're talking 10, 12, 15 hours straight. I did not know balance. I had no structure. I had no discipline when it came to a schedule. I just gave everything into my business. And where I said that isn't as all like, you know, bad because it did kind of help me get my business to where it is today. I should have had better structure and I shouldn't have been comparing myself to a lot of the social media gurus that I saw was starting a business yesterday and succeeding tomorrow. I really had to learn that my time when my business was going to be successful in my eyes is different than others. And comparing myself to someone else when I don't know what resources they had, what kind of capital they had at the beginning was not okay. When I literally started my business, I started my business being the sole provider and investor in my business. I didn't have like a secret family fund that had 50, 10,000, even $5,000. I literally started my business with a hundred dollars. And from there, little by little, I would invest in my business to get to where it is today. And so to this day, I am still the sole investor of my business. And of course, you know, the business running itself. So those are the five mistakes I regret making my first year of business that honestly, was an epic fail, but I'm so glad I made those mistakes because those mistakes helped me learn how to do better for my business. When it comes to business, honestly, guys, it's not sunshine and rainbows. Like there's some days where I'm on top of the moon where I'm like, I'm doing it, sis. And then there's some days that I'm like, let me throw the whole business away, sis. But at the end of the day, I still push through because I know what I signed up for. I know this journey wasn't going to be just a smooth road. It was definitely going to be a roller coaster. And I am so determined to, you know, succeed when it comes to my business and so determined for the journey that I let all those lessons just fuel me to do better. So if you see yourself right now where you're at your business or you haven't even gotten started and you're just feeling the fear of failing, Failure is a part of life, honey. And as, as much as we don't want to hear it, you have to fail to learn. And I'm going to take it back to just a little example, right? One of my favorite brands, beauty brands alongside mine's, is the Lip Bar. The Lip Bar is owned by Melissa Butler. And I just love her brand. I love the whole mission. And she really be out here killing it. But... When Melissa first got started with her brand, she was doing it in her kitchen and literally, you know, creating all her cosmetics in her kitchen. And then she said they had like a warehouse in China. She went to Shark Tank. Shark Tank told her she should rethink her whole business. Ten years later, Melissa and the Lip Bar are celebrating 10 years and they are all over the world. They are in Target stores, Walmart stores. They are in so many different places because number one, my good sis Melissa kept going. She knew her mission was fueling her. She kept her faith regardless of the outside noise that wanted her to fail, even maybe an inner voice, and she pushed through. And now her business is where it is today. And even for myself, I had my business now for over four years. And I've achieved so much. My second year of business, I surpassed five figures. My second year of business, you know, starting my business with only $100, being the sole investor in my business, making over five figures, to me, that was a big deal. To me, that was a big deal. And then within that same time frame, we got featured in Vogue. Pop Sugar, publications were picking us up. We had a fuel, we had a few big time influencers using our products and we were on the rise and we are still on the rise. But if I were to give up that first year because of those epic mistakes and fails that I made, I wouldn't be where I am today. And I want you to take that information to use it to fuel your businesses. Start the business, continue the business. Believe in yourself, believe in your mission, and trust and believe 
that's just enough to fuel you to keep going and even the days where you feel like you're not that girl remind yourself why you started remind yourself of the little things that makes you feel like you're that girl don't think of that temporary feeling that's eventually going to go away remember why you started and let that be the fuel to keep you going thank you guys so much for tuning into this video if you guys enjoyed this video please make sure to like and subscribe and comment below if this video was helpful to you it would be great to hear from my fellow business owners and my business owners that are about to get started. If you guys want to take your business knowledge to the next level, tap into the CEO Unfiltered podcast. I created that podcast where I share with you guys additional resources and business and entrepreneurship and best self information. I interview entrepreneurs in different industries and they share total gems with you guys. And of course, as I said before, I share so much more gems there as well, too. Also, follow the CEO platform on social media and join our community. The CEO Unfiltered platform is all about helping you elevate in your business and in your best self. I'm your CEO girl boss, and I want to see you win. I want to see you thrive, honey. And I'm here to give you all the resources that has helped me alongside other resources throughout this journey as we go through it together. All links are included down below alongside my Amazon storefront, which includes business tools and resources to help you elevate in your business. Until the next video, bye Shio Boss Babes.